Prophet Muhammad had narrated in many traditions the advent of the Imam of our time 250 years before his birth. Al Mahdi Rajulun Min Wuldi. Ismuhu Ismi. The Mahdi is from my descendants. His name is my name. He is the ninth descendant of my grandson Hussein. He is the promised word of God. He will go into occultation until Allah gives him permission to reappear and fill the earth with justice and equity, just as it has been filled with injustice and oppression. Yes, I swear by Allah, people will benefit from him in his absence, just as people benefit from the sun, though it is sheltered behind the clouds. 250 years later, the story of the birth of Imam al-Mahdi begins with the story of his mother, Narjis. Narjis was the descendant of the successor of the Prophet Jesus, and also the granddaughter of the Roman, uh, Roman Christian Emperor. One night, Princess Narjis saw in her dream Lady Fatima al Zahra along with the Virgin Mary. My sweet daughter Narjis, this gracious lady is the sovereign of all the women of the world, and she is the holiest woman in the entire universe, Fatima al Zahra. I am sure you are aware that your father, Prophet Muhammad, has visited me in a dream and married me off to his grandson, Imam al -Askari. So I ask you, Fatima Zahra, why hasn't the Imam visited me yet? My dear Narjas, my grandson is waiting for you to embrace the final religion of God, Islam. Islam is a continuation of the message of Jesus. My holy sister Mary is not satisfied with the religion you are following now. If you want Jesus and his holy mother Mary to be satisfied with you, and if you'd like my grandson to come and see you, please do repeat slowly all the things that I will say now. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulallah, wa ashhadu anna aliyan waliyallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulallah, wa ashhadu anna aliyan waliyallah. From now on, wait for my grandson Hassan. He will come and visit you in your dreams. Narjas awakens and is overtaken by joy. She ensures that the dream she had been regarding her marriage to Imam al Askari and her conversion to Islam were kept a secret from her grandfather, the Roman Emperor. At this time, Narjas's grandfather declared war against the Abbasid Caliphate that ruled the Muslims. During the chaos of the war, Narjis disguised herself as a slave and left the palace in an attempt to reach her husband, Imam al Askari. At the time that Narjis left, Imam al Hadi had a request for one of his companions. Bish. You are one of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari's trusted sons. We know that you have allied with us most obediently, and you have always believed in us in your heart. I have a favor to ask of you. I would like to tell you that this will bring about full joy to your heart, and it will increase your rank in the presence of God. Go to the bridge of Baghdad, and await the arrival of a man who has numerous female slaves with him for sale. When he puts them up for sale, take this pouch of money and purchase a slave with the following characteristics. If the slave refuses, hand over this letter to her and bring her along with you. The person that is not for will understand it. Do not worry, Bish. This letter will reach its recipient. Bishr ibn Sulaiman proceeded to the bridge of Baghdad to implement the order of his Imam. At that moment, a man passed by with a numerous 
amount of female slaves. Among them was the one described by Imam al-Hadi. He brought up the first slave, Narajas. I can no longer bear such an insult and such a misery. Even if you offered me the key to Solomon's kingdom, I would still look you in your face and say no. So take pity on your money and do not waste it vainly. What? What am I supposed to do? I sell you. Do not hurry. I must find someone suitable to me, someone that I can trust. Please, please, sell me to this man at once. My name is Nargis, granddaughter of the Roman Emperor. Imam al Hadi informed me in a dream that in the near future, my grandfather will prepare a powerful army to fight against the Muslims. He himself will be the commander in chief. He told me to change my clothes and put on the clothes of a simple slave and incognito go along with my grandfather's army. In due time, he would inform me what to do after that. So I awaited for his instructions and here they are in this letter. Nargis and Bishar continued on their way to Samarra as Imam and Hadi awaited their arrival. The next morning, Bishar and Nargis reached Samarrat and went to the house of Imam al Hadi. Welcome, my child. You see the majesty and greatness of Islam and the honorable behavior of the Ahlul Bayt? O oh, grandson of Muhammad, how can I express my thoughts and feelings, whereas you are wiser and more knowledgeable than me in so many ways? My child, I have great news that will bring you eternal honor and dignity. With all due honor, I am ready to hear this joyful news. God will grant you a son who will be the sovereign of all the worlds from east to west, and everything will be under his command. He will bring about justice and equity when the earth would be filled with tyranny, oppression, and injustice. Who will be the father of this child? The father of the child is the same one that our holy prophet on that special night came into your dream and recited the marriage vows between you and him in the presence of Jesus, the son of Mary and his successor. Do you remember? Yes, of course I remember. How can I forget that sweet and important event? That special night when I had dreamt that Lady Fatima Zahra came to me and I converted to Islam on her holy hands. From then on, he comes into my dream every night. Assalamu alaikum, Nargis. Wa alaikum salam, Hassan. Bishr, go on and call my sister Sayyida Hakima, so that I may marry my son Hassan to his bride to be Nargis. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Nargis, this is my honorable sister Sayyida Hakima. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. My beloved sister, Nargis is the one I, that I had spoken to of before to you. Please take her with you and further instill in her the teachings of Islam. Because this pure woman is to be the wife of my son and the mother of the last Imam to come. It will be an honor to teach the mother of the representative of God. Sayyid Hakiba further instills in Nargis the religion of Islam, just as Nargis and Imam al Askari's relationship continue to grow. Months after the marriage between Nargis and Imam Hassan al Askari had taken place, came the sad days of the martyrdom of the 10th Imam, Imam al-Hadi. Imam al-Hasr received the important role of Imamat, 
by the will of God Almighty while he was only 22 years old. His wife Nargis was already pregnant. On the 14th night of Sha'ban, Imam Hassan al-Askari invited his aunt, Sayyid Hakima, for iftar. Assalamu alaikum, my dear aunt. Wa alaikum assalam. My dear aunt, tonight is a special night. Tonight, the proof of Allah will be born. He is the final Imam and the seal of the successors. It is he who will be the savior of this world and fill it with justice and extinguish oppression. It is he who carries the will of all the prophets and all the imams. He is the awaited savior Allah promised humanity in the Torah, the Bible, the Psalms of David and the Quran. Hakim's heart was full of happiness. For years people spoke of the final imam's arrival. She would be able to witness it first hand. Oh son of Ali, are you sure that tonight is the special night that you have been longing for? Of course I'm sure my aunt. May my life be offered to you as ransom, but who is the mother of this great child? Nargis is the mother of my son. Sayyid Hakima walks into Nargis's room. My life be offered to you, my dear aunt. How are you? Do not ever say that again, my sweet child. It is my life and the entire world that should be offered to you. I'm fine, alhamdulillah. God Almighty will grant you a son this very night. He shall be the leader and master of all the people of the world. And one day, he will solve all the hardships and problems of all his followers, inshallah. Oh, Hassan. I did not see any sign of pregnancy on Nargis's body. My dear aunt, be assured that my son will be born tonight. The mother of my son is like the mother of Prophet Moses, so there shall not be any sign of pregnancy on her until the time of birth. Allah is protecting my son as he has protected Musa. My beloved wife, know that your baby is a boy. His name is Muhammad, and he is the next and last Imam after me. Serenity and tranquility appeared on Nargis's pure and blessed face after she had heard those words from her beloved husband. Oh, Father of Muhammad, what is the right time for the birth of my baby? My dear, it will coincide with the rise of dawn. Nargis remained quiet in humility after praying and breaking their fast, everyone went to sleep. When the time of midnight prayers arrived, Sayyida Hakima woke up and took a glance at Nergis and found no sign of pregnancy. As she contemplated this in her mind, she began prayer and she thought, And now, dawn is beginning to come, but still, there is no sign of the promise of my Imam. My dear aunt, do not have any worries. This is the promise of Allah and soon the time will come. Sayyida Hakim, most embarrassed from her thoughts, returned quickly to her prayer. And as she continued her prayer, Nargis woke up startled. Why, my sweet lady, are you well? Do you think the time of your giving birth to your son has finally arrived? Yes, I think the time has come. On Friday sunrise, the 15th day of Sha'ban, 255 years after Hijrah, the promise of God was born into this world. Imam Muhammad al-Mahdi, the patron of age, spread his holy light to all the world. I swear by Allah that he entered this world in prostration, clean and pure. My dear aunt, allow me to carry my beloved Muhammad. My son, speak. <laughs> I 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله In the name of God, the, name of God, the, name of God the most merciful, the most compassionate. Greetings of God Almighty to Muhammad, the well-chosen and last prophet of God. To Ali, the well-pleased commander of the believers and father of the Imams. To Fatima al Zahra, the holy mother of the Imams. To Hassan and Hussein, the sons of Ali the glorious martyrs and the chiefs of the youth of heaven to Ali ibn al-Husayn to Muhammad ibn Ali to Ja'far ibn Muhammad to Musa ibn Ja'far to Ali ibn Musa to Muhammad ibn Ali to Ali ibn Muhammad and to my father Hassan ibn Ali Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين. And we desire to show favor to those who are based in the land and to make them imams and to make them the heirs. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashadu anna aliyan waliyullah, Ashadu anna aliyan hujjatullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah. حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن عليا ولي الله أشهد أن عليا هجة الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح هيا على خير العمل هيا على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. My dear aunt, please hand the baby back to his mother. As Nurgis held her newborn baby, God's greatest angel, Jibrail, suddenly appeared. We, the angels of God, have been commanded by God to protect him until his promised day. Muhammad, you are the living argument of God against the peoples and nations. Muhammad, you are the face of God towards which those who pray to him turn their faces. Muhammad, you are the protected trust of God. You are the successor of virtuous men and women. You are the memory of the pure. You are the final day of the world. You are the link between the earth and the heavens. You are the face of God Almighty. You, you are Imam Al-Mahdi.